Henry Ford, one of the world's most influential industrialists, brought radical changes to America's business life thanks to the Ford Motor Company, which he founded and was also the architect of a family business that would grow stronger and stronger for 100 years. Let's take a closer look at him. Henry Ford was born on a farm in Michigan on July 30, 1860. Henry and his siblings, who lost their parents at a young age, were adopted by their neighbors. But he was different from his other siblings. Henry discovered his passion for mechanics thanks to an old pocket watch gifted to him by his father. Almost every day he disassembled, repaired, and reassembled the watch. A year later, Henry had the chance to visit a train factory in Detroit, where he went on a school trip. Seeing steam-powered engines there, Henry quickly became accustomed to the mechanics of steam engines, which would later become widespread in agriculture and villages, thanks to the farm life he lived. And Henry, who started as a machine apprentice in Detroit, one of the brightest industrial cities of the time, in 1879, three years after his mother's death, gained valuable experience in repairing steam-powered engines. In the 1880s, gas engines, which were not common in America at that time, began to be produced by Nikos Otto in England. Henry, who was looking for the opportunity to experience gas engines with four eyes, had the opportunity to personally examine the gas engine at the company where he worked as an engineer in 1889. When I look at the results he observed in his experience, gas engines were quite advantageous against steam engines. Due to the fact that gas-powered engines were internal combustion, they offered faster and more powerful performance than steam engines in every respect. Steam engines, for example, had to wait for the water in the boiler to heat up first. This required almost 30 minutes. But it wasn't going to be easy for Henry to understand the principle of the gas-powered engine. Because Henry, who had been working on steam and metal mechanics until then, did not know much about electricity, and the operation of the gas engine started with a spark, that is, electricity. At this point, he had taken one of the most important steps of his career. Henry Edison got a job as an engineer in a lighting company. This enlightening company did not ignore Henry's experience and made him chief engineer in 1,090 thirds. Thanks to this, Henry, who had become quite adept at gas engines, was ready to take the biggest step of his life. A successful gas engine that would emerge from his own hands would achieve his real dream after three years. Henry, who built his gas engine-assisted bicycle at 1,890 under, began to enjoy his experiments and mistakes day after day. Since its initial design lacked a cooling system, the gas engine soon burned out, in the first year of the quadricial, he developed a cooling system and made various changes in its structure. In 1890, Henry sold his first car, the Quadri Psyche, for $200 after revisions. Henry, who shaped the second and third models for the quad cycle afterwards, never thought of development and innovation. Why did he lay the foundations of his own company in 1899? With the investments he received, he established the Detroit Automobile Company, which has a capital of $150, and his first plan was to produce delivery vehicles that can be used in business areas in Detroit, which has turned into an industrial paradise. But it didn't work out as planned. Outsourcing parts production and delays in procurement thwarted his plans. The first vehicle took six months to build, and Henry resigned at 1902 years after failing to handle the pressure from investors. A new name was put in charge of the company, and the name of the company was changed to Cadillac Automobile Company. Ford had not yet created its dream car company. Bicycle races had now turned into races powered by gas engines and had become very popular in America. In 1902, Henry made a joint business deal with the famous bicycle rider Tom Cooper, and built a race car model for him called the 999. This model won first place in many competitions and played a major role in the recognition of Ford engines. Henry founded the Ford Motor Company in 1903 with a capital of $28,000, which he raised from his former shares and in environmental investments. 
in the next five years, the first design was produced by the model family, the last design was produced by the model TY, and achieved great success, Ford, which increased its sales with Ford Dodge and new factories established in Canada, was now moving towards unstoppable growth. So what was different from the previous one? The first was the supply chain problem. Due to supply problems, the owners of the Ford Dodge machine shop had made a deal with the Dodge brothers. However, the deal fell apart due to the payment crisis in the future. Thereupon, Ford signed different agreements. At 1905, he founded the Ford Manufacturing Company to increase his own engine and material supply. With a production of 25 cars a day, Ford sold 1,600 vehicles in 1,905. Another change was the production line, which was a more return application that Henry Ford would bring to the automobile world. In other words, Fordism was a very successful system in which the ability of the worker was reduced to zero, but perfected production. In this system, each worker is given a standard job and does only one job during the working time. It is also one of the most well-known methods of capitalism and is still used as the most successful method of car production. But he had to wait for 1,010 to use this method before one at O900 was the best-selling car in America at the time, and the model mother had also captured the title of the largest vehicle manufacturer. In this process, although the production line was partially implemented, it brought great success. In 1908, the Model T was introduced, which would bring Ford its main success. Thousands of people who trusted Ford's success had pre-ordered and waited for the Model T to be produced. Although there were more reasonable models for the middle class, this vehicle was the best car of the period and was well ahead of its closest competitor in terms of equipment and technique. In 1910 thirds, the Ford Holland factory was built and 13,000 people were hired in order to increase its production to the international level. In fact, it was not possible to meet such a high need for workers in the automobile industry at that time, but Henry Ford did not need skilled workers in this factory, where the production line would be fully implemented. He also increased his daily workers' salaries from $2.83 to $5 a day with a sudden newspaper ad. It stunned the entire industry. Ford, which suddenly doubled the income level of the middle-class people, received enough applications to reach the number of workers it wanted one day after the job posting. At the end of the ongoing 20 years, he will go down in history as the richest man alive. Henry Ford has written his name in history with golden letters as the founder of one of the largest and highest quality automobile brands in the world today. See you in our next video. Goodbye, my beautiful followers.